All right, so I'm going to do this last problem here, the notes, or the last one that I did in class, the top left problem. So with a problem like this, um, again, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to graph it on Desmos. So when I type this in, um, I go y is equal to negative x squared minus 4x plus 2. Um, so I get a graph looking something like this. And so, again, when I go to graph this, what I have to do is I have to find my vertex first because when I graph it, I need to include my vertex in the middle and then two on the left, two points on the left and two points on the right. So when I do this, I've got negative 2, 6 in the middle. And so when I go to make my table... Um, negative 2 is the first number. I can't, it, and the thing with Desmos is I can't add rows above. So probably the easiest way is for us to delete out our table. Oops. And here, now I can go ahead and make my new table. So I know that I'm going to have a negative 2 in the middle. Um, and again, just like thinking through this, and if you need to, you can always zoom in, and you can look at all the whole numbers that are next to negative 2. So I've got negative 3 and negative 4 to the left. And then when I do this, negative 1 and 0 to the right. And it's kind of nice. I can just hit the Enter button, and it automatically puts them in. So there's my Y column. So I've got negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and 0. So you can use Desmos, uh, the number line on there, to help you with what your whole numbers should end up being. Then once I'm there, now just by looking at my graph, I see these dots up here, which are the dots of my table. Each of these dots is giving me a both sides of the graph, um, and it is making it so that I can see what the parabola looks like. If I were to go with what I started with here and just keep this graph looking like this, what you should be able to see is that I only have the right side of my parabola. So if I only graph those points, I don't really have a good picture of what my graph looks like. So that's why we need to go around our vertex and go all the way here so that we can look and see both sides. So this is 2, 5, 6, 2, 5. Okay. So when I graph this, again, um, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, negative 2, negative 3, 5, 6, 5, 2. The nice thing is when you go to graph, I can be pretty um, – I, I know that it's going to be symmetrical, so that's how I could uh, graph that kind of quickly once I got to my vertex. So then I can draw my parabola just like that. And again, as I go through and label each thing, there's my vertex. And that's the ordered pair, negative 2, 6. My axis is symmetry. Again, always goes through my vertex, which is a helpful way of remembering it. There's my AOS. It's always x is equal to some number. And again, what I'm going to do is I'm looking for the vertical line. So if this is my vertical line here in the middle. I know that it has shifted two spaces to the left, so that number right there should be a negative 2. Um, so my axis of symmetry is x is equal to negative 2. Um, the one that's tricky here is my zeros, roots, and solutions. So my zeros, roots, and solutions, again, is where, and if I go all the way back up here, it's where my graph crosses my x-axis. It's my x-intercept. And so when I go here, um, just looking at my graph, there's my x-intercepts. Um, so that's my solution, and that's my solution. But what's helpful is on Desmos, I can actually pull this up. And if I just click on my x-intercept where it kind of looks like it, it'll actually give me my two x-intercepts, my two solutions. So I know that this would end up being my zeros, roots, and solutions gives me negative 4.4 or 0.4. Um, usually we'll have whole numbers, but if you ever, in a case, get a decimal, that's okay. I can put the decimal answer down. Um, my y-intercept then, let's see, 
my y-intercept runs into my y-axis right there. That's positive 2. And then does this one have a maximum or a minimum? Again, what I can do is I can look for um, my vertex. My vertex is on the top. That would mean that it has a maximum value. And again, if I wanted to give an actual number for that value, I'm thinking how high does this graph go? So if I'm going up, I'm going to do this in a different color. If I, my graph goes up, there's where it reaches its maximum height. So my maximum height would be my y coordinate, which would end up being 6. Oops. Apple Pencil is freaking out on me. Um, but so that's how you do a problem where your graph is shifted over to the left. Redo your table. Make sure that your middle number of your table is always your vertex. And remember that you can use decimals. You can zoom in and get those whole number black lines to help you figure out what are the whole numbers next to negative 2 um, that you can use. So hopefully that helps.